Hey, horror fans, once again, it's the Horror Minds of Money G, and at this, at this time I'm going to do a reaction video of an article I just read called, uh, Wasn't This Supposed to Be the Golden Age of Horror? <laughs> this is going to be good. <laughs> Now apparently, I think sometime last week, an article from Vogue magazine written by uh, Taylor, I think his last name is Atrium, Antrim, I think I'm pronouncing his last name right, wrote an article in this magazine called, uh, Wasn't This Supposed to Be the Golden Age of Horror? Now I actually saw this tweeted out by, I believe it was Mariana from Impressive Blends, I know she tweeted this out, I saw a couple of other people in the horror community tweeted out this article. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, several YouTubers made uh, video reactions on this article. Most most ones I saw was uh, Vicky from Nightmare of Amen. She did an art. She did a reaction video on this one, and uh, Lita Lita Ferry. She also did one as well. Uh, I actually had uh, just had a chance to read the article last week, but I couldn't do a reaction video because I was fighting the cold. And uh, now that I'm very healthy, I wanted to articulate and give my own reaction to the article and uh, about what this uh, Taylor guy has said about when this is supposed to be the golden age of horror. Now first off, let's make something clear. I don't read Vogue magazines, not for my demographic, never read Vogue magazine before. I uh, never read anything about Taylor uh, Antrim or whatever he's written. I never heard of him about it until this article came out. I did do a little research upon him. Uh, he has written two novels, one called The Headmaster's Ritual and Immunity. He is a graduate of uh, Stanford University, he has written for, from Esquire, The Villa's Voice, and The New York Times, and I believe he's now um, the head editor of, of Vogue magazine. Uh, yeah, that's basically what his background is. Now, I don't know if this guy watches horror movies. I'm assuming that he has to if he's going to write an article like this. Uh, but let's break down what he has to say about this. Now, he goes on to about what how good horror was back in 2017. Uh, he talks about we have blockbusters like Split and Ed. We had uh, accent indie uh, foreign horrors like Raw and It Comes at Night, Thelma. And, of course, he talks about Get Out, uh, Jordan Peele's masterpiece uh, that should have won an Oscar. And he says when it didn't, the air went out, the, the air go out of the genre. Uh, I think if he would have asked, I'm pretty sure he should know that while it didn't win Best Picture, uh, it did win uh, Best Original Screenplay. <laughs> so uh, while it didn't win Best Picture, I mean, Jordan Peele did get recognized for his excellent work he did for uh, Get Out. Now, um, I guess uh, there were some other good movies that came out in 2017 besides all those movies. And, uh, yeah, but horror's been good this year so far. <laughs> uh, at the next part of the article, he talks about hereditary and a quiet place. But for some reason, he calls them thrillers, not horror flicks. But a uh, quiet place, a thriller? I don't think so. When you look at the quiet place, you know, most me and most everyone else agrees, it was an excellent horror picture because we never seen anything like it. I mean, when you have to live where you live in an area where you when you have to live where you actually have to make no sound at all, where you can't even talk or cough, because you have creatures that will attack you if you make any type of a sound. I mean, that's intense scariness right there, and how they projected that on the film was excellent. It's not just a thriller; it's horror, and the creatures are horror. That's what, uh, that's just like with uh, any other alien invasion movie. Now, you can have thrillers uh, involving aliens, but this, to me, and most everyone else will agree with me in the horror community, that A Quiet Place was a horror feature, and so was Hereditary. There was no thriller about it, especially Hereditary. Trust me, that was pure horror. Now, I do agree with him about, um, uh, I'll agree with him about Slender Man, because he talks about uh, Winchester, The Nun, and Slender Man. Now, I didn't see Winchester, so I can't comment about it, but most people who did say they didn't like it at all. Uh, 
the nun was okay for me. It wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. But I'm pretty sure everyone will agree. Slender Man was one of the worst horror pictures that came out in 2018. So I do agree with him right there. He also talks about we didn't get a decent shark movie this year. What? From my understanding, the Meg was a shark picture. As a matter of fact, it was actually pretty good. <laughs> it was a, I call that the sleeper hit of the summer uh, of the Meg. So I, I guess he didn't like the Meg. Uh, he doesn't mention it in the article right here. So I don't know if he saw it or not. But the uh, last I took, the Meg was a shark picture. He goes on to say that 2018 has not been a good year for horror. And he's also including uh, Halloween which he called it the overpriced Halloween in that assessment. Now, keep on paraphrasing while I'm going through the article here. Uh, of course, it made a lot of money, so I don't know how he cannot see it was great, but to me it was. Um, he talks about it wasn't that good, but according to mostly, I mean, put it this way, mostly uh, general people will say that Halloween was good. You have people that didn't like the film, but uh, he also uh, compared... Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis's role to the French horror film Revenge. <laughs> uh, probably because it's female empowerment. So I will say that I do agree with him that I do agree with him that, you know, some aspects of this particular version of Halloween, you do get female empowerment here. But uh, I really don't compare Revenge to uh, Halloween. There are two different uh, subgenres when it comes to horror. Revenge is simply a rape, a rape revenge uh, uh, genre, which is a little bit more thriller that has some horror elements in it. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, uh, this was strictly just about her just, you know, waiting for Michael to uh, attack. So it was really, yeah, you still have female empowerment, but I think they're two different uh, uh, versions of female empowerment. One is rape, rape revenge. And the other one is just a woman uh, fighting back and uh, figuring out so that's the only way she can deal with her demons or her PST is to prepare for Michael's eventual escape and be ready for him when he does. So they're not the same. Now he goes on talking about Suspiria. So now I have not seen Suspiria yet, so I can't agree or disagree uh, with his assessment of Suspiria. Now he does spoil some things about the movie, so I'm not going to cover that aspect of the article because one I haven't seen it yet and two I want to spoil it for anyone else who has not seen the movie but he does go on to a little tirade about Suspiria as well. <laughs> the next part of the article uh, he mentions television horror. Uh, he talks about the terror because he liked that a lot. Uh, he thought that was a very fascinating uh, uh, show that aired on AMC earlier this year. I did not see the terror. From, from what I understand, a lot of people did love it. Uh, a lot of people did uh, like that particular film. He talks about uh, Blumhouse TV, uh, which uh, Jason Blum's Blumhouse TV. Uh, he talks about that. He talks about the anthology show, Into the Dark. And he also talks about Netflix original, um, original movies, such as The Apostle. No, I did not see that movie, so I can't comment about it. But from what I understand, it's sort of like a Wicker Man uh, um, movie uh, about a religious cult on a Welsh island during the turn of the century. Yeah, But I have not seen that movie, so I cannot comment about that particular one. But he actually goes into depth with The Haunting of Hill House. Now, he goes into depth about that particular show, um, which he says... And she, and while he did enjoy the entire uh, 10 episode, he felt as though that, and I'm only paraphrasing here, uh, he said it's like a, it has a six feet under style drama, but it was very slow pace. And while he did like that show was dark, but he said it lacked intensity. <laughs> So, uh, now, I, I saw mostly all of, of The Haunting of Hill House, and I do agree that, yes, it's slow paced, but to me, it didn't lack any intensity. Matter of fact, I believe the slow pace, so, hmm, the slow pace gives it in intensity, you know, because, uh, I, probably because, of, I guess because he, I don't know if he got confused because it's told in a very nonlinear way. For people who have seen it, you know what I'm talking about. We go back and forth between when the kids 
or grown-ups and when the kids are kids. So we're going back and forth between those two uh, timelines. And I you know sometimes that could be a bit confusing to some people, but as long as it's a story is told very well and it's acted very well, you can get away with it. Now he did not like any of the acting uh, in the film. He called it mirror media, media core acting, but I thought it was pretty good. And I did like yeah, this might have been a slow pace, but I did enjoy the slow pace because it does make the scenes more intense when the ghosts come out. Now he ends the article saying that this has been a more disappointing year because living through 2018 has felt like a horror film. <laughs> uh, it must be a bad uh, uh, year for him. Now, he ends the article by uh, quoting, uh, uh, this is a direct quote from the horror, Ace Horror Director, Kara Kusami, who did the initiation in XX. Basically, she, uh, she says, we go into horror not to be terrified. But we go, we, we go into horror not to be terrified, but to be terrified in a familiar form that allows us just a little bit of control over our experience. Now, he goes on off and says, control wouldn't that be a nice feeling to have right now? <laughs> now, I, I, I don't know what Taylor's purpose is for writing this article. Obviously, he felt as though that this has not been a good year for horror. But I myself, and obviously other people in the horror community, think that this has been a pretty good year for horror. Yes, we do have bad horror films like Slender Man and um, Death House. Ooh, God, that terrible horror movie. Um, True for Dare that came out this year. And a lot of people didn't like The Nun. But we did have some excellent horror films like Revenge, uh, Annihilation, uh, like I said, uh, Mandy, uh, and some people might by be split on that one, uh, Halloween, obviously A Quiet Place, and Hereditary. So I think this year has been a pretty good year for horror. Now, I don't know what type of horror films this guy likes, because obviously he must watch them because he wouldn't be written his article. Uh, but hey, if he wants to uh, challenge, if he wants to come on my channel or any other channel, he's more than welcome to come on my channel and stake his case. Hey, I know I'm just a small channel, and I'm pretty sure I'm not one of the big boys. But if he's willing and willing, hey, I'm right here. Just come on here. I can set up a live stream, or if you want to do a uh, taped video, I'm more than willing to sit down and talk to you, Taylor. But I certainly like to see, you know, why do you think this year was a bad year for horror? Because it hasn't been, not in my opinion. But I'm not angry or upset or mad because that's the man's opinion and he has a title to it so I'm not mad or upset about it that's his opinion I'm just saying I just don't agree with it so my horror fans uh, what do you think about this article I'm gonna leave a link in the description below so that way you can read it and you can give me your honest opinion after you read the article tell me what you think about him do you agree what he's saying or do you disagree with what he's saying and if so uh, what do you agree and what you disagree upon it? Just leave your comments down in your comment section. And tell me what you thought about this article about what happened to the golden age of horror. <laughs> well, that's my video for today, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. And if you did, please give this a thumbs up and uh, share it as well. And once again, if this is your first time here. Please hit that subscriber button, ring that notification bell. That way you can come and enjoy the horror experience with me, the Horror Miser Money G. And as always, all my social media links will be down in the description box below as well. Once again, my name is Lamont Smith, better known as the Horror Miser Money G. And always remember, Horror Rules. <laughs> I'll see you guys later. I'm out. Peace.